I tried with Sam. I wanted to save him. Well, I reckon it's a lot more complicated than that. Tell me those things that you judge me for. I did those things to keep us alive. I'm looking for my brother. Tommy! We did those things. They weren't things. We murdered people. Be careful who you put your faith in. The only people who can betray us are the ones we trust. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my Last of Us Episode 6 trailer video. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. It's only going to get crazier from here on out. We're doing a giveaway for HBO Max subscriptions. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post your favorite moment from the trailer on the video. Careful for spoilers from Episode 5 if you haven't seen it yet, but the title of the episode is Kin, a reference to Joel reuniting with his brother Tommy finally at his settlement in Jackson, Wyoming. There's been a bit of a time jump since the end of Episode 5. Obviously, you see snow all over the ground, so it's become winter. They'll probably address this during the episode because Joel told Henry, R.I.P., Henry and Sam, great episode last week, great Henry and Sam arc. He told them it was going to take them a long time to get to Wyoming. In the game, it was fall, like there was a big time jump after they leave Henry and Sam's bodies. But in the game, when they reached Tommy's settlement, it wasn't quite winter yet, like there wasn't snow on the ground. That didn't happen until a little bit later in the game, so they might have combined a couple of events that happened later in the story. I think the showrunner probably just did that to mark the passage of time a little bit more, just to show you how long it's been, how long it's taken them to get that much further across the United States. But just starting at the beginning of the trailer, Joel is talking to Ellie at a campfire on their way out because she's sad about not being able to save Sam, about thinking that her blood might be able to cure him. Joel trying to explain to her that it's probably going to be a little bit more complicated than that, like you can't just bleed on someone else and use your blood to cure them. She's not some sort of infected vampire or something like that. There were a lot of questions about what was happening during that scene. Like, did she actually believe that holding her hand bleeding to his leg would actually cure him? Or was she just doing that to try and make him feel better? The way she talks around the campfire here, it makes it sound like she actually did believe that it would work. One of the other changes from the game is that she didn't leave him a note because he wasn't deaf. He didn't have the notepad and wasn't writing notes that way. The reason why they include a couple of flashbacks is just because it kind of traumatizes Ellie in a much bigger way. And it's part of this larger arc about the way she feels how she's responsible for the human race. Like the idea that she could potentially create a cure using her body. In the idea that Joel is slowly coming around on this idea of redemption, which is a big part of his storyline with Tommy during the episode. Because a lot of his scenes with Tommy in the trailer are Tommy being remorseful about what they've done and seeking forgiveness, seeking redemption. And Joel's slowly on that path too. He just hasn't quite hit the point that Tommy has hit. Then we see Tommy's settlement, and the whole idea here is that this is meant to be a small independent settlement that isn't another quarantine zone, and it's not another group of fireflies or like another really terrible group. It's just a genuine good group of people trying to survive on their own in a small settlement. Even though it seems like a very well-developed settlement with a bunch of people, it's relatively small compared to a normal quarantine zone. Joel and Ellie arrive on horseback in the town through the gates. There's this giant gate at the front of it, and he sees Tommy working on something with one of the other people, and they reunite. They're all right. But you know these people? I know him. He's my goddamn brother. Tommy. Holy shit. <laughs> How you doing, baby brother? Goddamn. Yeah. Let me look at you. This is Maria. Be nice to her. She sort of runs things around here. Ma'am, thanks for not blowing my head off. Would have been embarrassing, considering you're my brother-in-law. We all got to get wrangled up at some point. Big video game Easter egg because we're seeing Tommy in episode six again. If you remember, Perry on the show in episode four and episode five was played by the actor who did Tommy in the video games. The whole reason for him coming to Wyoming in the first place looking for Tommy is because he hadn't heard from him in weeks and he'd been communicating with him in the past even though they'd been estranged for a little while. They'd still been communicating. The way he explained their backstory to Ellie is that in 2003 after the initial fungus outbreak they traveled with a group of hunters like he was part of the hunters group the same group that Kathleen came from. While they were headed to the Boston quarantine zone, and that's what he's talking to about Tommy, about killing all these people because they had to survive and being remorseful for that. All the quote-unquote terrible things that they done. They're not things, they're people. We killed a bunch of people. 
The way Joel explained it to Ellie, he only came along to keep an eye on his brother Tommy. He didn't want to kill all those people. Like He didn't relish in all that violence. He was just trying to keep Tommy safe. His whole reason for continuing in the apocalypse, even though it's terrible, like he was talking to Ellie, is because of family, to keep family safe. He did all those terrible things to protect his family, and that's a big part of his character arc during the season. Like, he'll continue to do very controversial things for what he considers his family. Eventually, that's going to include Ellie. He's not quite there yet. Like, he doesn't totally think of her as his daughter yet, and that might be part of the episode, too. Like, them actually addressing the elephant in the room. Is she still just a responsibility to him? How does he feel about her now after everything they've been through? While they were traveling to Boston doing all these terrible things, it sounds like Tommy was really, really against it and wound up meeting Marlene and she offered him a different path. Like she sold him on the Firefly's plan of saving the world, looking for a cure and overthrowing Fedra and installing a civilian government. That's one of the Firefly's big goals. Like they are one of the big alternate factions to Fedra, but also the Hunters are another faction. And then you have a bunch of smaller rogue factions living outside the quarantine zones. Most of them are all pretty terrible, and the idea is that the Fireflies are also doing very terrible things too, but they're not quite as terrible as Fedra. And they just feel like they can install a civilian government that will work a little bit more like society worked before the fungus outbreak. Like, yes, life will be bad, but we can make it slightly less bad. And as Joel explains, as things continue, they met Tess. He developed his relationship with Tess slowly over time. It sounds like they got to Boston and then immediately split off from that group of hunters. Like Joel said, they, they left that group as soon as they could. Tommy meets Marlene and joins the Fireflies and they start doing their thing, just enacting their slow plan to get rid of Fedra. And it sounds like that took him out west and he was communicating with him over that period of time. But depending on how long you think it's been since the events of episode one, during episode one, he said it'd been about three weeks since he'd heard from Tommy. And the reason why he stopped hearing from him is because Tommy left to join this settlement. He met a woman who we see in the trailer here. It seems like this is going to be his wife. He fell in love with this woman and then joined the settlement that she was part of. Like she and the rest of the people that she was with had this small settlement. So Tommy joined up with them and they're just trying to make it the best place they can in the apocalypse. I think it's implied that the Fireflies were doing really terrible stuff too, making Tommy do terrible stuff, and that's why he left them. And it's supposed to make Joel's decisions at the end of the series and what happens with Ellie ultimately, because the whole idea is that he's taking her to the Fireflies a little bit easier for him to make. Like, he has to make a bunch of controversial choices. And they use a lot of Kathleen's speech at the end of episode 5, where she talks about Henry choosing Sam over the rest of the people there. Like, is he more important than the rest of the human race? So a lot of that is meant to inform the choices that Joel has to make, like, is Ellie more important than the rest of the human race because she could potentially save the human race? So there's a lot of those deep conversations going on during this episode, the next couple of episodes probably, where Ellie starts to reckon with that, like, her greater responsibility and Joel thinking about his greater responsibility to her. Most of the actual settlement here is meant to be accurate to the game, like all the different buildings and all the people running around here. You also notice when they ride into town, there's a banner that says 2003 because it's kind of frozen in time in 2003 when the first big fungus outbreak happened and things went crazy. Tommy argues with Joel about the terrible things that they did when they were part of the Hunters. Like I said, Joel hasn't totally come around on it. Like he still believes that he did what he had to do. He hasn't completely reckoned with all the terrible things yet. This whole conversation that Ellie has is just about the people closest to you being able to betray you much more easy than strangers or more likely to betray you. That's meant to be a reference to Joel, just because Joel is the person that she is closest to right now. I think it's just a foreshadow of something that happens at the end of the season. No spoilers about that. We'll talk about that in a couple more episodes. But that's meant to flow with the idea that Joel does whatever he has to do, quote unquote, like he told her earlier and he's talking to Tommy about, for family, in the name of family. So even if he does terrible things, they want to make you understand why he's doing them. So at least you identify with it, even if you don't agree with what he's doing. When all the people on the horseback find them here and see that they're trying to capture them, I actually think that it's just other people from Tommy's settlement. And it'll, that'll be the surprise. Like, no, 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 we're friendly. We'll take you to the settlement. This person with the baseball bat kind of looks like Troy Baker. He is part of the series, but he's actually part of the cannibals group from later in the games. So they might be combining his group a little bit sooner, or they might be part of the story with his group. And they might just do that in two different episodes. I don't want to get too much into what happens with their group because in the game it happens much later and it is like a really big WTF moment. And it seems like most of episode 6 will be dedicated to what's happening around Tommy's settlement. This person in a remote cabin might either be a flashback or somebody that they encounter on their way to Tommy's settlement. 
This scene of them arriving at the building here with Ellie shooting behind them seems like it's the university from the game, which is where they're looking for the Fireflies. Like the whole idea is that Tommy used to be part of the Fireflies and is supposed to give them information about how to find them. But when they arrive at the place that Tommy told them to go to at this university, they find it abandoned in a note that the Fireflies left saying that they retreated to Salt Lake City. And a lot of that they'll probably cover in later episodes. There are nine episodes total in season one. I'm not sure how much plot they're going to cover in episode six. But the whole idea is that they do not find the Fireflies for a good long while. If you spotted any other Easter eggs or references in the trailer footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. My full episode six video will post next week. I believe they're going back to the regular schedule of episodes too. They only aired episode five early just because of the Super Bowl. Episode six will probably be next Sunday. Not this Sunday, but the Sunday after. And because it is Super Bowl weekend, there are a bunch of Super Bowl trailers. Like there's like five videos already that I'm trying to work on right now. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. We have the Flash trailer, there's a bunch of Marvel trailers, I believe there's going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer, new Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailer video, probably a couple surprises too. I'll probably be doing trailer videos for like the next four or five days. I think there's also going to be some new Mandalorian season 3 footage too because they're dropping so much new stuff. Those will be the next episodes that I start doing at the beginning of March when it premieres another big Pedro Pascal series. Pedro Pascal into the Pascalverse. Everyone click here for my full Last of Us Episode 5 video and click here to learn about Christian Bale coming back as Batman. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.